Hello, my name is Jennifer and I'm 35 years old. Recently, I became the proud owner of a new luxury hotel, which was a big change in my life. Let me share with you how this exciting transition happened. It all starts with the previous owner, my ex-husband, Bobby. Bobby and I first crossed paths in college, and it wasn't long before we started dating. It felt right from the start, and I saw no reason why we shouldn't be together. After graduation, we both pursued our careers with zeal. I was doing quite well for myself, holding a respectable position and earning a decent salary. Bobby, on the other hand, was on a rapid ascent in his career, quickly securing a top position in his company. Our relationship took a beautiful turn when Bobby proposed, and I joyfully accepted. We opted for a modest wedding, choosing to invest in a dream home instead. Now, it wasn't that I couldn't afford a lavish wedding and a house. My savings were substantial. Growing up in a family with four siblings taught me the value of saving. Despite the high income of my parents, managing expenses for four kids was challenging. So from my first paycheck, I was determined to save diligently in a high return savings account. By the time Bobby and I married, I had accumulated a significant amount. Our life together was comfortable and admittedly filled with luxury and spontaneous spending that might shock many. I share this to give you a glimpse into our prosperous life, which is why Bobby's sudden descent into depression puzzled me. He seemed disconnected and barely spoke to me. After much effort, I finally got him to open up about his feelings. He expressed a sense of unfulfillment despite his successful career. This was a pivotal moment in our story and the beginning of a new chapter, leading to my unexpected venture into hotel ownership. Being just a step down from the CEO is quite something, huh? I mused, noticing Bobby's unease. Yeah, it's significant, but it's not fulfilling in the way I had hoped, he confided, a mix of appreciation and regret in his tone. Puzzled, I asked, what's missing then? You have a high-paying job and the kind of authority many only dream of. Bobby hesitated before revealing, I'm thankful for the financial security and the power, yes. But pursuing this career wasn't my dream. My true aspiration has always been to open a luxury hotel. That makes sense, and now could be the perfect time for it, right? We're financially stable and you've achieved so much in your career, I pointed out, trying to encourage him. What's holding you back, though? I probed further, genuinely curious about his reluctance. It's the risk involved. Launching a venture of that magnitude would mean I'd have to leave my job. We could probably get by on my savings alone for five to six years, but that's just for living expenses. I don't have additional funds to invest in starting the hotel, he explained, concern evident in his voice. How much do you want to make this dream a reality? I asked, seeing his dilemma. I'd love to start as soon as possible, but realistically, it might take another six to seven years of work before I can save enough not only to fund the project, but also to ensure we're financially secure, Bobby admitted. But you might not have to wait that long, I said, catching his attention. What do you mean? He looked at me, puzzled. Remember how I've been saving since I was 18? I've managed to accumulate a substantial amount in my savings account, thanks to the interest. I can contribute that money to your dream, I offered willing to support his ambition. No, I can't let you do that. That's your money, not mine to use, he protested, taken aback by the offer. That's not how it works between us. We're a team, and your dreams matter to both of us. Let me help make this a reality for you, I insisted, dismissing his concerns. He was overwhelmed. I don't know how to thank you enough. Just succeed and be happy. That's all I ask, I smiled, knowing this was what he needed. Bobby's dream of owning a luxury hotel was something he'd always been passionate about. Even amidst our busy lives post-college, he'd often reminisce about it. Noticing his silence on the subject had worried me, but his recent openness reaffirmed how much it meant to him. Having the means to assist him, I saw no reason not to support his dream. Witnessing him regain his usual enthusiasm as we began planning was deeply rewarding. We agreed it would be best to transfer the funds to Bobby, allowing him to manage the necessary payments for his dream project. I was determined to transfer the significant sum Bobby needed for his hotel project all at once, but I wanted to avoid any unnecessary attention. Aware of the stories my mother, a seasoned lawyer, had shared about banks and federal agencies scrutinizing large transactions, I decided to seek her advice. Hey mom, how are you? Hi dear, I'm doing well and excited about retiring next year. I love my job, but it's time. What about you? Why did you call? I need your advice on how to transfer a large sum of money without raising eyebrows. Why do you need to move such an amount? I explained Bobby's long-held dream of opening a luxury hotel and my decision to support him financially. That's incredibly generous of you. But where is this money coming from? From the savings I've been accumulating over the past 17 years. And you're planning to use all your savings? 
I hope you've considered securing your investment with a contract. A contract? But why? I'm offering this out of love. My dear, experience has taught me that business can change relationships, often not for the better. It's wise to have legal safeguards in place. Mom, Bobby and I have been together for nine years. It's hard to imagine things turning sour. Understanding her concern, yet feeling confident in our relationship, I was torn between heeding her professional advice and following my heart to support Bobby's dream without reservations. It's true. I wasn't questioning our bond or how much I trust you and Bobby. You know he's like family to me. However, money has a way of complicating things. Even the closest relationships can strain under financial pressures. To safeguard yourself, having a contract that identifies you as a primary investor is crucial. It's not that you're wrong to feel uncomfortable about it. It's just a practical step for your security. I understand, but it just feels so off to me. How do I even start this conversation with Bobby? The best way is to be direct, just like pulling off a Band-Aid. If Bobby truly understands, he'll see the wisdom in it. If not, then it's a red flag that you're probably better off recognizing now. But wouldn't that seem like I'm manipulating the situation? Think of it as a precaution, a minor inconvenience for the greater good. If you need help drafting the contract, I'm here. I'll need some time to think it over, I replied, feeling conflicted. Over the next few days, I wrestled with the decision, losing sleep over the dilemma. On one hand, I wanted to protect my interests. On the other, it felt like betraying Bobby's trust. I had pledged to support his dream, and now I was considering adding conditions to that support. Ultimately, I decided to seek a second opinion from an unbiased lawyer, who echoed my mother's advice and highlighted that the contract would protect both Bobby and me. With a heavy heart and a nervous stomach, I broached the subject with Bobby after dinner. Bobby, we need to discuss the financial support for your hotel project. I started cautiously. He looked at me, waiting. I've been advised to formalize my investment in your project through a contract. It's standard business practice, not a reflection of my trust in you. A contract? But why? Don't you trust me? He asked, a hint of hurt in his voice. It's not about trust. It's about ensuring clarity and protection for both of us. If I didn't trust you, I wouldn't have offered to help at all, I explained, hoping to ease his concerns. Why do you suddenly want a contract? This feels like you're doubting me, he persisted. I'm not doubting you. It's just safer for both of us to have everything clearly outlined in writing. It's about being prudent, not distrustful, I replied, trying to convey the importance of the situation without damaging our relationship. I've always valued my mom's legal advice. It's guided me through many challenges and even helped us navigate through tricky situations. However, this scenario felt fundamentally different. It wasn't just about seeking advice, it was about a significant gesture of support for Bobby, now seemingly overshadowed by legal formalities. This feels like you're taking a step back from your original offer by suddenly introducing terms and conditions, Bobby pointed out, his confusion and frustration clear. I understand why you might see it that way, but this is standard for business investments. I'm proposing to hold a 49% share, ensuring you retain control while also acknowledging my financial contribution. It's not about trust. It's about mutual respect and recognition of each other's stake in this venture. I tried to explain, emphasizing the practicality of the situation. Bobby couldn't hide his disappointment. You're making it sound like you're doing me a favor by investing, yet you're setting up barriers to my dream. I'm not trying to hinder your dream, Bobby. I just believe it's reasonable to have some acknowledgement for my investment, which in turn could benefit us, both professionally I responded, hoping to find a common ground. His reaction caught me off guard. Asking for a contract makes me feel like you don't trust me, he said, the hurt evident in his voice. I assure you, trust isn't the issue. It's about securing our future together in this venture. Maybe take some time to think it over. And if you disagree, we'll need to discuss what that means for our investment moving forward, I suggested, hoping that some reflection would help. I can't believe this is happening, Jennifer. Bobby remarked, clearly pained by the turn of events. It was difficult to see Bobby so upset, but I believed in the wisdom of securing our mutual interests through my mother's advice. After our conversation, Bobby withdrew, not speaking to me for a while. I attempted to bridge the gap, explaining that my intentions were not rooted in distrust, but in a desire for security for us both. Bobby remained distant, leaving me to hope he'd eventually see the rationale behind my decision. 
Those three silent weeks felt incredibly long and strained, marking a challenging period in our relationship. Living together felt more like being roommates than a married couple, and I nearly reached the point of retracting my offer, just to end the tension. However, Bobby came to me one day, his efforts to secure other investors having fallen through. The risk was too great for most, and those interested didn't have the necessary funds. Reluctantly, he accepted my offer, despite his reservations about the conditions attached. It was a silent acknowledgement between us, and in the weeks that followed, we officially launched his business. We managed to secure a prime location for the hotel, and though the following years were marked by stress and constant decision-making, the result was nothing short of spectacular. The hotel was the epitome of luxury, a realization of Bobby's dream, and I was proud of what we had achieved together. However, my excitement for the grand opening was dampened when Bobby asked me not to attend, claiming my presence was unnecessary. We argued briefly, and although I couldn't understand his reasoning, I eventually conceded, a decision that left me feeling both hurt and bewildered. After the event, Bobby returned, full of apologies, attempting to make amends for his earlier request. He never fully explained his reasons for wanting me to stay away, and over time, I chose to let the matter go. One day, about a year after the hotel's opening, Bobby returned home in a rare mood of elation, a stark contrast to his usual exhaustion. The hotel was thriving, hosting celebrities and receiving rave reviews, especially for its cuisine offerings. Seeing him so invigorated and hearing about the hotel's success brought a renewed sense of vibrancy to our lives, reminding me of the passion that had driven us to undertake this venture in the first place. Deciding to invest additional time in hiring well-trained chefs truly paid off, I thought to myself, proud of Bobby's accomplishments. That's amazing. I'm really proud of you. But when do I get to experience this famous hotel of ours firsthand? I'd love to dine there and soak in the luxurious ambiance everyone's talking about. Bobby hesitated before responding. I don't think that's a good idea. Surprised, I asked, why not? He attempted to explain, albeit awkwardly. To be blunt, you don't exactly fit the image of what our clientele expects. I'm concerned about the hotel's reputation if you were to show up not fitting into the upscale atmosphere. I was taken aback. Are you serious? Why would I be upset? Because I put my all into this project, and now you're saying I'm not classy enough to enjoy it? Our high-profile guests might judge the business negatively if they see me there, dressed in my usual style. Bobby's response was cold and pragmatic. It's about the business, not personal. You just don't understand the image we need to maintain for success. His words revealed a side of him I hadn't seen before. At that moment, I felt a mix of anger and disbelief. How could my partner, the one I supported wholeheartedly, demean me based on superficial standards? It wasn't just the rejection from the hotel that stung, but the realization that my significant financial contribution seemed to have earned me no respect or appreciation in his eyes. I was so hurt, yet my anger was a quiet storm. I couldn't grasp how the person I shared my life with could hold such a low opinion of me. What had I done to be viewed this way? At that moment, all I could think about was the irony of the situation. I had invested not just my money but my faith and support into this venture, only to be told I didn't fit the part. It felt like a monumental waste, not just of my financial resources but of my emotional investment as well. Never had I imagined that my support would lead to such a personal divide, nor that I would be barred from enjoying the fruits of our collective labor over something as trivial as appearances. All the investment I had made went directly into Bobby's dream, a contribution I was initially pleased to provide. After all, I was doing well in my career and happy to support him. However, his ingratitude made me question why someone like him deserved to own such a dream when he had lost sight of who helped him realize it in the first place. My desire for retribution grew, and I knew exactly where to start. I called my mom, a seasoned lawyer, for advice after Bobby left the house, explaining everything that had happened. She reminded me that as the primary investor and shareholder, I wielded significant influence over the business. No major decision could proceed without my consent, including changes in ownership. Empowered with this knowledge, I convened a meeting with the other shareholders to announce a change in ownership. Their reactions ranged from shock to disbelief at Bobby's behavior towards me. After explaining the situation, they unanimously supported my decision. The paperwork was tedious, but the outcome was clear when Bobby stormed home, outraged to learn from a board meeting that he was no longer in charge of the hotel. What have you done? 
Bobby demanded, finding me calmly waiting in our bedroom. Are you referring to the recent board meeting? I asked, feigning ignorance. How could you strip me of my dream like this? He continued, visibly shaken. Some dreams should remain just that, especially when you choose to disregard the very person who helped you achieve them, I replied calmly. Imagine if our roles were reversed. That would never happen. I always ensure I present myself well, he retorted, still not grasping the gravity of his actions. Indeed, you do have the appearance of someone who's lost everything, I observed, not missing the irony. It seems you're not as savvy in business as you thought. This was all possible because of that stupid contract. As the majority shareholder, I have a say in the ownership. You insulted me, and now you face the consequences. Bobby's reaction was a mixture of disbelief and realization that his disregard for the contributions and feelings of others, especially mine, had led to his downfall. It was a harsh lesson in respect, reciprocity, and the importance of valuing those who support your dreams. Bobby was convinced the hotel couldn't thrive without him, claiming his high-profile connections were key to its success. He warned that the business would flounder the moment these celebrities realized he was gone. However, I wasn't concerned. My observations told a different story. Bobby's attempts at networking were doing more harm than good, annoying guests rather than impressing them, and his departure might revive the hotel's fortunes. Taking over, I was determined to transform the hotel into something even grander than Bobby ever imagined. My goal was to create a welcoming space for everyone, proving that inclusivity could drive success. The moment to assert this change came starkly with the presentation of divorce papers, a clear sign of moving on from Bobby's negative influence. Bobby's pleas to reconsider fell on deaf ears. My investment, both financial and emotional, was met with ingratitude, revealing his true character. It was a hard but necessary decision to exclude him from my life and the business. Following the divorce, Bobby attempted to contest it, seeking to retain some control or compensation. However, the business was non-negotiable. It remained entirely mine. The fallout extended to Bobby's family, who initially berated me, believing his skewed version of events. Yet, when presented with the truth and evidence of Bobby's actions, their stance shifted dramatically. They distanced themselves from him, offering apologies to me, which I accepted, extending goodwill through discount vouchers to the hotel. The experience was transformative, it taught me resilience and validated the importance of standing up for oneself. Bobby's family's change of heart was a bittersweet vindication of my actions. Now, with Bobby out of the picture, the hotel is thriving more than ever. By embracing a broader clientele, we've not only increased our business, but have also cultivated a more inclusive and welcoming atmosphere. This success has been incredibly healing, allowing me to move past the ordeal with Bobby and look forward to a brighter future. I'm immensely thankful for my mom's wisdom and support through this tumultuous time. Her foresight and guidance were instrumental in navigating the legal and emotional challenges. As I embark on this new chapter, I'm filled with a sense of freedom and anticipation for what lies ahead, ready to embrace life's opportunities with open arms.